Hello everyone, this is Johannes and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Imperius from designer Grant Rodiek and it is published by Colossal Games. This is a small micro drafting, anti-drafting game coming to Kickstarter today it's coming right now actually it's a kickstarter you can back it on kickstarter if you like if you don't like you don't have to but if you like to back it on kickstarter you can but why should you back it why what kind of game is this let's check out what kind of game it is let's get to the table let's look at how the rules play out and we're gonna come back and see what i think about imperious the goal of Imperius is to get the most victory points and your points are tracked on this whirlwind of colors and numbers over here with your markers that you mark your victory points with. So how do you get points? Well that is what we do in this game, we get points. This game is a drafting game and what you're gonna do is that you're gonna choose the number of players. Let's say we have a three player game, then you're gonna take the six cards that belongs to each player. So these are the six cards that belong to the blue player and you're gonna shuffle them up with the six cards belonging to, let's say the red player and the green player. You're gonna shuffle them and in with those, you're gonna shuffle four random event cards. So you're gonna shuffle that up together and that's how you set up the game. More than that, you're also going to use four planets or one planet per player. So in the three player game, you're going to use three and the four player game, you're going to use four planets, shuffle them up and place them randomly on the table. So we have shuffled all these cards up perfectly. And then you are going to give each player five cards. And basically from now on, it's a normal draft. The only difference from this game and most games is that this game, you can actually draft other players cards. So let's say I'm the red player. I can choose now to take the blue player's faction card just to be able to let the blue guy not have his or her card to be able to use. So I'm going to pick a card, send the rest to the left, pick another card, send the rest to the left, pick another card, send the rest to the left, and so on. Until you have one more card which goes into the middle of the table like this, and you are going to end up with one card per player. So let's say it's these four cards in a four player game. These get shuffled, and you deploy them to the one planet each, like this. So, after that, everybody's gonna have four cards in their hand, and now we're gonna play those four cards in turn order to these four planets. So the first player is gonna play a card, and you can play a card face up or face down to a planet. There can be a maximum of two cards face down and a maximum of five cards on each planet. So you're just gonna play these cards one at a time. Let's say we play like this, 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 and so on until everybody has played all their cards. Then you're going to start on this planet right here, you're going to take up all the cards, turn over the ones that are face down, and you're going to sort them due, uh, due to their uh, initiative number that's up in the corner here. You're going to sort them uh, from that from 0 up to 12, and you are going to resolve the card one after another. I'm going to go through how all these cards resolve, and not the event cards because there's a lot of difference of them, but you're going to go through these faction cards. But you're basically going to do that for each planet and hopefully some people are going to get some points if nobody has 20 points which is how the game ends then you are gonna take all the cards shuffle them together put them at the bottom of the draw deck and then deal out more cards and play another round and you're going to continue doing that until somebody has 20 points then you are going to score a couple of other things but before we um, explain the end of game scoring let me explain the seven the six different cards that you have in your faction deck. Let's see here, we have the Noble. Let's first look at how this card is built up. You have the name, of course, the initiative. Over here you have the strength and the favor of the card is gonna be used in a lot of different of these cards. So we have the Noble. If it's only one Noble on one planet, he's gonna score, or she is gonna score this victory points that is on the planet. So this is a four victory point card. I'm gonna score Four victory points if my noble is there and it's still alive at seven um, initiative if there are more nobles there then the one with the most favor is gonna uh, score I said if my noble is still alive because there is an assassin if another player's assassin is where my noble is then the assassin will kill him and he will get some victory points uh, as well and when my noble is dead I am gonna get a casualty which is basically a negative point at the end of the game 
Uh, if there's more assassins, then it's the one with the most strength that's get to kill the noble that's there. The only thing you can do to not get your noble killed is to have your noble with the royal guard. Because the royal guard has protect. And that means that if some other card is going to die, let's say here the noble, then the, the royal guard will die instead and you don't get a casualty. Then we have your elder. There is an advanced game where your elders have a, a special abilities. You're not going to go through all of these. And in the basic one, they're just really powerful either in strength or favor. Then we have the uh, commander. If you have the most strength on this planet, then you're going to score X amount of victory points and you're going to put one of these command tokens on this planet. And the last one is the ambassador. And that's basically if you have the most favor, then you score X amount of points, which is stated on the card. In this example, it was four victory points. So you're going to continue doing that, as I said, until somebody gets, let's say I get 22 and blue gets 23. And we're going to do end of game scoring. And end of game scoring works like this. Let's see, we have some command tokens for blue over here. And like that, and I have like this. This is how it looks at the end of the game. We're going to resolve all planets here. There's no command tokens. Nobody gets anything. Here, I have two. I have the majority of command tokens, and I will score the planet once more. That's two points. Over here, nobody has more. It's a tie. Nobody gets the points. And here, I'm alone. I have the most, and I will get four points. And then we're going to get one point for each command token we have in play. So I'll get one, two, three, four points. And the blue will get two points. At the end of that, whoever has the most points is the winner of Imperius. And that is how you play Imperius. This is a really, this is a really neat little drafting strange beast of a game. I, I don't really know where to start because this game is, 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 is so strange. Like, I read the rules of this game and I, I basically had no idea what was going on. I didn't know how to play, I didn't really understand the mechanisms, so we sat down to try to play like a small half learning game of a two player game and, and it started to click, like it started to see, be like, okay, I understand how this works now, but how do I play it well? Then we played some more, we played a couple more times and it started to click a little bit more, it started to understand, okay, so maybe if that's the first card I get, I get my card, let's say I get my ambassador, I'm gonna try to draft so I can uh, score that, if I get another card I can score that's a huge bonus but basically for now I'm trying to like maybe get one card I'm gonna score maybe two and maybe I'm gonna uh, deny you from scoring something and um, okay I usually start these reviews with components because as you know these are prototype components because this game is on Kickstarter right now so I have no way on having the finished components because the game doesn't really exist yet so let's just I enjoy the artwork of this game a lot. I do enjoy this. It's a futuristic game, as Grant has said himself. This game is this is game is really um, influenced by Dune. Uh, I have only watched the movie Dune, so I don't know so much about the universe. But it's like an older sci-fi style on the artwork as well, which I really enjoy, and it fits the game. Um, gameplay of this game is. Cool. It's a strange, small, nice, quirky game that you can play in like 30 minutes. I think our games are have lastly lasted about about 30 minutes. If you're playing fast, we don't usually play fast. You can basically play this in 20 minutes, 20 to 40 minutes. The box say 20 to 45 minutes. I think that's really, really yeah. You can play that. You played it in 40 minutes with four. You played it with 40 minutes with three players. So basically, 30 to 40 minutes is a nice. Uh, time frame for this kind of small game. What I think this game is really good at is being great with many many plays. You can play this game lots of lots of lots of times and you can explore different things. Like I heard um, I heard an interview with Grant he had with Blue Peg Pink Peg about this game. I think you should really check it out and he said that one of his um, problems with designing was to get the first game to be really really good because he wanted the fifth game to be really really exciting and it's really hard to make a game that is as exciting the first time as it is the 50th time and I must say this is a game that gets better every time you play it I think the first time I was playing I was like oh I don't really know what this is is there anything here it was fun it was a fun experience but I understood that there was more I could explore and understand more the more I played and that's the way I felt about this game so if you look for a game it's it's nice short time length because you can play it like between games you can play quickly just drag it out play two player three player four player everything works really well and 
just get it done quick and you can play it many times. I think if you play it with the same group a lot of times you're gonna get this meta game that really really works well for this game because there's so you can like see okay so you usually draft like that and then you can bluff with your drafting. So the more you play with the same group you can you can even more go into the psychological part of the, the drafting the anti-drafting which I think is really really interesting and it's also gonna be interesting to play with new players because you don't know how they're gonna play and you're gonna try to 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 understand what they're going for try to understand what's going on at all i really recommend this game as a game that you can play many 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 times it's fun it's quick it's easy to learn the rules you can play this over and over and over and still have a lot of fun that's everything i have to say about this game right now i'm really excited to play it more if you think this looks interesting go to the Kickstarter page and check it out. That's everything for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please comment. Are you looking forward to this game? Will you back this game on Kickstarter? What are you looking forward to in Imperius by Grant Rodiak and Colossal Games? That's everything for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.